So welcome. Um, my name is Zane Murfit. I'm a sales manager at Tableau. I uh, first just want to say thank you all for coming here. You could be anywhere uh, at Tableau Conference, and the fact that you're here and this room is this full, uh, I deeply appreciate. Uh, so thank you very much. Hopefully this will be a, a really impactful session for you. Um, I'm really excited to share with you, uh, you know, the work that we've been doing. Um, myself and a couple other people on our sales team, what we're going to show you today, um, a small team of us created it. We have a little bit bigger team of maybe 200 people that use it. It's amassed over 35,000 views in Tableau Server over the last year, so it's been pretty well adopted. I'm excited to take you through it. Um, so before uh, really going through this, I think it's important to learn a little bit more about me. Um, that was me uh, not too long before starting at Tableau. Uh, that is my real hair. Uh, if you would have asked me what SQL was before I started at Tableau, I probably would have said to what movie. Uh, I'm, I'm not a very technical person, uh, but Tableau has utterly changed me. Um, I've matured a lot since then. Uh, this is my wife, Kelsey. We have three kids, Ellison, Marlo, um, and Avery. Uh, our little ginger in the middle, we're part of like a special ginger club. Like People come up and show us pictures of their kids all the time if they have a, a redhead like that. So it feels like we're in a really special, tight-knit group. Um, I wanted to share this with you because uh, if you feel like your analytical maturity or the maturity of your organization is more like guy with an afro <laughs> or more like three kids and a mortgage mature, uh, I think that you're going to get things out of today that you can go back and directly apply uh, to what you're doing to support people um, and help them be more productive. I really do believe that. Uh, what you're going to see today isn't anything that's really that complex in terms of visualization types. Uh, it's more about like a workflow and how to amplify productivity. So uh, we're going to talk about, um, oh, actually, before we do this, uh, uh, this has nothing to do with my presentation. <laughs> uh, uh, but having three kids, we've moved to the suburbs, sold out to the suburbs. Suburbs rock, go suburbs. Um, and so I usually start every meeting like this. And I wanted to start this one in this way, too, because I think Tableau is a really unique thing. It's all about community. It's all about connecting with people. Um, and New Orleans is a great music town. And so I'm always trying to get uh, feedback on what people are listening to for my hour-long commute. Uh, so if you could stand up on your feet real quick, this isn't going to be long, uh, just turn to your neighbor and let's just take 30 seconds and just share what was the last thing you listened to. Not your favorite thing, but like the last thing you listened to, like podcast, musician, artist, anything like that, and then we'll come back. I'll probably ask you about it. Okay, oh, whoa, that was super loud, sorry. Okay. Awesome. Uh, anybody have a really good suggestion or a thing somebody listened to that I can steal from you? Metallica, Metallica yes. One is like one of the best songs ever. Uh, we, so in the suburbs, before we came here, uh, we were walking down the street on Sunday on a family walk, and our neighbor was absolutely blasting Phil Collins. Uh, and uh, the song, uh, I, th uh, I Missed Again, I think it is. Uh, it's like a pretty deep cut for Phil Collins. But I went on like a very long Phil Collins walkabout on the drive to the airport uh, Monday morning trying to find that song. So I'm like very into Phil Collins today. So uh, uh, great. Well, hopefully you, uh, you know, found a new shared interest. And you can go see a show that hopefully uh, you like or found somebody new to listen to. Um, so we're going to talk through this concept of the automation of a salesperson, um, this visualization concept of number decoration versus the sales explorer. These are two common pitfalls that we see uh, when trying to do what we're going to show you today. Um, the thought process of these examples, and then we're actually going to go through how to create it. Uh, so I'm going to demo uh, a portion of it. And then in the notes of this presentation is a much more detailed like step-by-step -step guide. So if you like this and you want to try it, uh, you can get the slide presentations after a conference and, and really dive in. Um, so Gary Vanderchuk says content is king, but context is God. And Gary is an entrepreneur who I have a lot of respect for. He's all about trying to build empathy and try to drive connection with his customers and the people that he works with. 
And so I wanted to take you through, uh, hopefully creating some empathy for, for salespeople, <laughs> um, or at least the business users that you're serving, um, and help explain uh, some of the thought processes that drove us to use Tableau in this way, because uh, I think you can probably take that thought process and better adapt it to your situation, um, and it's important to understand that. So Greg DiMichelli is the Director of Product Management at Google Cloud Platform. He did an interview with Forbes uh, at GeekWire's Cloud Summit two years ago. And he said two things that probably aren't of a, uh, that big of a surprise for those of you in this room. Um, he said storage is so cheap, we've become digital pack rats, like we just collect an insane amount of data. Uh, and that the, one of the top two challenges of every company he works with is uh, they're trying to figure out what to do with all this data that we collect. And so there's this like general sentiment out there that information can help me, as, especially as a salesperson, but it's not easy to manage it, it's not easy to find value from it, as we saw from Adam's keynote today. And so that leads to this whole thing of like when salespeople attack, right? So someone like me shows up at your door and we have a dashboard maybe in Tableau or some application and it's just not quite what I wanted. Um, and when I try to describe it to you, what I'm describing sounds like a unicorn. It's like, does that even exist, right? It's really hard to just like articulate an idea. Um, and the problem with that is it's not just one of me, there's like hundreds of me maybe thousands of me, depending on the size of your organization. And so while you're fast at work on the unicorn trying to deliver on this maybe ambiguous thing I asked for, uh, one of us will come up with an Excel list. Hey, our leads are over here. Uh, another one of us will go build a super complex Salesforce report and say, no, it's not, it's over here. <laughs> and when one of us deletes the other's leads or we show up to a meeting and I say the number is 2.9 and you say it's 4.7, we look at each other and we collectively say, get the data people. <laughs> and we kind of bounce off the screen, pitchforks in hand, and blame you guys. Um, and a lot of the people I've gotten to work with in my five and a half years at Tableau, uh, they feel like this. They feel like they do a lot of dirty work, and they don't get a lot of credit. Um, I don't know if any of you can resonate with that or connect with that feeling, but uh, that is the problem I want to solve. I want to try to reduce those moments of unfair blame and blowback. I'm going to make this more of a collaborative experience between the end users you're serving. So why do we act that way? Why do we do things that are so frustrating and you're like, I don't get you at all? <laughs> well, uh, salesforce.com does an annual report on the state of sales. They said 66% of a seller's time is spent not selling, which is kind of wild when like sales is in the job title, right? Um, Forrester says that 24% of B2B salespeople are gonna get automated by 2020. Um, sales leaders are expecting like 155% increase in AI and sales uh, over the next uh, two years. And so uh, because we spend a lot of time not selling, I think uh, we can end up doing really not best practice things where we don't serve our customers well. Um, that same study said that almost half of buyers are really annoyed and frustrated with like aggressive sales tactics. Um, and so there's this, you know, you're here at Tableau Conference because you're probably trying to empower people with data and make them more productive. Uh, but there's two pitfalls I've seen in my time at Tableau. And so Moritz Steffener wrote this great blog post. It's about a six minute read. So there be dragons, data viz in the industry. He's talking about data visualization, some of the issues that he's seen. Uh, he was one of the kind of the early adopters of this. And the two main things that stuck out to me is that he wants to go beyond just making nicer charts and actually think about what that can mean. Um, and find this middle ground of a domain specific, purposefully crafted user interface that would truly enable us to see beyond the numbers. And my only issue with Moritz's blog post is I don't think he gives that great of an example of that middle ground. Um, and that's what I hope to show you today. Uh, the two pitfalls though, the first is number decoration. It's like what you get in your Fitbit. It's like, okay, I've taken 5,200 steps. I need to go take another 2,800. It doesn't tell me where to go. It doesn't give me familiar routes. It doesn't uh, explain if there's other people near me that I could walk with. It's just general information. It's helpful, but it doesn't empower me to take action. The other pitfall is, here's all the data, good luck. I'm tired of dealing with your unicorns. Here's all these charts, all these filters, just go figure it out. And that's equally overwhelming. And so the path forward is this concept of purpose-built applications. If you just drop somebody here at Tableau Conference and ask them what this was, like what, what is it that these people are presenting on, I don't think they would say dashboards. Because what you see is more like an application to solve problems. It's more like an application to support productivity. And so that's how I'd encourage you to think. That's, what, that's the thought process we took toward this was, was not, don't think dashboard, think application. Um, and before I show you this, I wanna just talk through two things, because this is mo almost more important than the content. How do you scale this and promote adoption? So if a KPI is worthwhile, 
you have to take action on it. Like, okay, I took 5,200 steps, so what? Sales are up, so what? Sales are down, so what, right? I have to be able to take action and actually impact that KPI. Um, the way that we encourage customers to do that, the way that we do that internally at Tableau is about building shared common goals between business and data. So myself as a business person, I have to come with what are the most important questions I need to answer daily, weekly, quarterly, and monthly, or monthly and quarterly. Um, the data team comes with do we have data to support those questions. It's not super sexy, it's not super innovative, it's really simple, but it's really hard to stay disciplined to that. It's really hard to do that. But if you stay committed to that, really cool things start to happen. Um, the next is how do you not overcomplicate it? How do you not take something good and then turn it into that sales explorer? So keep it focused on driving action to impact that KPI. Don't let other actions or use cases bleed into the dashboard. Like just try to keep it really focused. The second you start trying to add too much, like consider maybe making a different dashboard or a different application. Because um, ultimately, uh, salespeople just need lists. Right? That's usually what we need, a list of things to do. So let's look at some examples. The goal of these purpose-built applications is to remove two things. I think most of you would agree, I agree, I think if you talk to most leaders, the thing you never wanna say in a meeting is I don't know. I don't know why that happened. I don't know why our pipeline's up. I don't know why that campaign worked. I, I don't know why it didn't. And I think the second thing you don't wanna have to say is I don't know where to deploy my resources. I don't know where to send people to solve that problem. And so that's the mindset we're taking with all of these is, is to try to make sure people have the appropriate level of visibility as to what's happening. And then how can you go drive like maximum action right away? Okay, so I should take this in for a second. So this is Tableau server. This is a Tableau dashboard um, that I created um, with a ton of feedback from my team. So if you're a CTO, or you're a VP of sales, or you're just a leader making big bets on technology, the adoption of that technology is really important. And a lot of the leaders that I've talked to, um, getting people to adopt things like Salesforce or even you know, email or whatever CRM you use can be like really hard. Um, there's lots of training that goes into it. There's lots of things you need to do to make sure people use it in an optimal way. We are trying to reimagine a world where when you're ramping a new person, they don't even have to be a salesperson, it can be anyone that's using data to be more productive in their job. Rather than needing to go write some Salesforce report or borrow a report from someone else, they just go to a drop down, they find their name, it filters to their information, they select a plot point, and it opens the application they need to solve that task. So this particular dashboard looks at our next steps in our pipeline. Tony Stark's not a customer of Tableau. Um, just have, having some fun with some naming conventions there. Uh, the colored boxes are the days of the week. That green box on the left shows how many total deals do we have that week with the next step and the dollar amount associated with it. If I select any of those days, it filters the list down to just the opportunities open for that day of the week. In that list has the opportunity name, the problem to address, so like what are we actually trying to help the customer with, uh, and then what that next step is in the dollar amount. If I select any of those, it will actually open Salesforce up from within the dashboard in Tableau, rather than bouncing me out to a different tab. And I can fully edit and update everything from within the application. Now those thumbnails at the top um, is trying to drive more of a workflow. Because I think even the best customers at Tableau, like it can sometimes be difficult to understand where to go in server. Like you try to, you, you bring a new user in, they log into server for the first time. Maybe you just go off of like what's the most viewed content, um, and then you, you want to try to avoid that kind of tribal knowledge scenario where it's like, well, I kind of like this dashboard better than that one. And so we're trying to provide a, a form of kind of content governance and a workflow. So those thumbnails are actually just sheets in a dashboard. Um, if I select the next one over, the lead follow-up workflow, it just takes me to the next step of my day. So this is the leads that this person has to call. Uh, Leslie Nope is one of the greatest characters ever from Parks and Rec. I wish she was a Tableau customer. I think she would be if she was a real person. Um, and uh, so that list there on the left, it basically lets you filter by different statuses of leads. You can say like primed, open, remarket, those are some of the terminologies we use at Tableau. And that list will regenerate. You select someone and then it populates their lead right there in the dashboard. So you're more dropping into like the flow of productivity. You know, we talk a lot about Tableau, about like the flow of analytics, but I also think that can be applied to the end users that are leveraging the content that you all create. Now, the cool thing about Tableau is like, I'm a comm major from a party school. And I created this, right? Like, 
go Cougs. Uh, and so, you know, you can do this. <laughs> you can create this. Uh, and usually this is just what we need. We need a list like this. Um, so if we, take, if we go through this flow just a little bit more, so now that we've done some proactive things, now maybe we want to do more of like a review of content. So those little boxes up there are just different activities that we do, like demo, discovery calls, emails. Uh, the green and yellow boxes are, is a tree map of companies. So how many, uh, who's the account that we've gotten the most activity with this week? So if I select demos, I want to see what demos has my team done this week. It filters the list down to only the companies we've done a demo with. And if I select that plot point, it opens up the notes from Salesforce so I can understand what was that demo about, what are we trying to solve for with that customer, and help us try to deploy resources as fastly as we can. Because uh, you know, time is always of the essence. There's like a window of opportunity you, you have to help people. Um, and this allows me as a leader to be really proactive and, and help my team. Um, so in the interest of like, okay, well how do we make sure we don't like continually add more and more to this thing, right? So we have different versions of it. Um, this is what we call like our sales cockpit. The top row is for more proactive stuff. The bottom row is for more um, kind of review. Uh, this particular dashboard is looking at live activities. So those colored boxes are people on my team. If I select any of those, it filters the list down to just those people on my team with live activities that they've done for that week or that day. And then if I select any of those, it will open up their notes in the dashboard. Uh, we can use the commenting features in Tableau, just really start to try to drive a conversation around what is this person doing, what do they need, um, and again, try to capitalize on the opportunity. Um, we also use it for more like uh, specific things like Tableau Conference. So we took that same methodology and we applied it to um, our conference workflow. So this allows someone like Aaron to go filter to his name see who were the people that have attended conference in 2016, 17, and 18 by the account, click an account, and it just spits out a list of everyone who's attended in the past so that he can go engage them and talk through uh, either maybe why they can't attend this year or hopefully get them to bring you know, additional people. And we just don't want to lose that context, right? So you can see these aren't like crazy complex visualizations. Like I think the probably most complex one was like that tree map. Um, and so it's really just trying to figure out how quickly can we get to generating a list so I can go accomplish some tasks. And it's important to contrast this with our world when I started at Tableau. It was a lot of this, <laughs> going into Salesforce, building reports, going into your lead views, building views. Uh, I had a pretty classic moment with my manager, Terry, when I first started at Tableau. Uh, we were running a new campaign, created my view, no leads. So I kind of puffed my chest out, walked over to my manager, was like, Terry, what are you going to do for me? I got no leads. You know, how are you going to hook me up? And she's like, well, let's look at your lead view report. And we open it up, and she's like, do you remember that your last name has two T's on the end? <laughs> I was like, I do remember that. She was like, there's only one T on the end of this. <laughs> and so like, when we talk about the risk that like, a CTO or a VP of sales feels around like, technology adoption, like imagine that, I was gonna completely miss out on that campaign if I hadn't been so full of bluster to go like talk to my manager about it. I would've just assumed, yep, yeah, got no leads. And that's why we wanna move this paradigm to like pick your name from a drop down, get your information, don't do this tribal knowledge thing. Because uh, the way that us salespeople work, we're like so freaked out to be productive that like we'll just grab this, edit it, and go, and if it's not the right information, we just maybe assume it's not right. So one more time, just kind of help like really crystallize this of what we're going for. So this looks at our, uh, our website traffic, right? So what are people doing on our website? It's called our Who's Hot dashboard, trying to find leads that we're, we're ready to engage with. Uh, I know it's a little bit small, so I've highlighted this. So the goal is pick a time frame that you care about. So this particular dashboard can be filtered out across multiple years, all the way down to the last hour uh, using our relative date fil uh, uh, filters. Pick your name from a dropdown. So if you guys want to use like user filtering, you can have it pre-filtered to me based on my permissions. Or you, you know, we're a very open company at Tableau. We can see all of each other's information. That filters the list down to a set of accounts. You pick an account. You get a list of leads to call. You click a lead, and it drops you right into Salesforce. You can talk to Lloyd about I got worms and Harry and Dumb and Dumber and all that fun stuff. Um, but it's important, we believe, to not lose the context of like everybody else that's actually engaging. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the workflow we're trying to go for. Pick your time frame, pick your name, pick an account, pick a person, and go. 
Uh, and hopefully that's kind of keeping us from that scenario of like uh, people passing around lead view. Um, okay, so let's look at like how is the sausage made? And hopefully this is not as disgusting as sausage being made. Uh, <laughs> hopefully this is more kind of fun uh, to, to check this out. So, um, okay. All right, so this is Tableau Desktop, which you're all familiar with. Um, this is a data set looking at venture capital funding. Uh, so we use that as a way to just monitor activity in our territories. Um, we subscribe to a service that, uh, or I subscribe to a service and I just manage it via Google Sheet. I just first wanna call out um, this icon up here in the upper left. Uh, that Tableau logo means that this is a published data source, that this has been passed through Tableau's data service. Uh, if there's one thing I can encourage you guys to go learn about here at TC is Tableau Data Service. Uh, it allows Tableau to apply machine learning to your data to serve recommended data sources to people so that when you go to connect, you don't have to replicate table joins, you don't have to replicate calculations, it just serves you the data sources that are like what you're looking for and then allows you to drop into the flow of an analytics. It is the feature in my five and a half years at Tableau that has taken uh, people who are struggling to drive adoption in their company to like speaking at TC the next year is that feature. Um, it solves just a ton of data governance cha challenges. And so I would be super remiss if I didn't call that out. It's a really elegant feature. It doesn't require a bunch of work. It's literally like a right click, publish to server, and then it passes the connection. Um, so we're looking, um, this is essentially just a cross tab, right? Uh, and I think at Tableau, we've uh, sometimes, at least on the sales team, done our customers a big disservice by looking at like a cross tab or a tabular view and then being like, turn that into a tree map. It's like, why? It's like, because, show me says to. <laughs> and uh, that may not be the right thing. It just may not. Um, so this particular list is looking at uh, the funded companies, when did the funding happen, what city is it from, and then how much money did they receive? And then the, uh, the tool tips have all this other information about the company, their website, who's the CEO, a little bit of information about that particular company. Um, the thing to remember here, this is like how simple this is. It's all about the detail pane on the marks card. Um, so the marks card over here allows you to do all of this customization. So if we open this tooltip up, you can see how everything is kind of dynamic here. Um, it's all of basically the dimensions and measures of our data, so it will, re it will change what it is for every plot point. Um, and there's a lot on here, because I'm wanting to make the tooltip like very robust, but it's simply just dragging something onto the detail. So if I wanted to add another element to this tooltip to use for the URL actions I'm about to show you, all I have to do is grab in something like investor, so who is the lead investor, and I just simply drop it onto detail. And now this is gonna live here. I could use this in the tooltip if I wanted to. Um, and that's now something that's available for me to use to drive new queries. So if I go to the dashboard, so this is what it looks like at Tableau. So have any accounts in your territory recently gotten funding? We're tr we, tr we often try to prompt people with a question in the t how we title our dashboards to help them understand what to do with it. Um, I had this issue where I would publish content that I felt like was so cool, uh, and it would just be like, you know, account analysis. <laughs> and people wouldn't, they would like get to it and be like, okay, this is cool, but I don't really know what you want me to do with this. So we try to provide like, what is the question we're trying to answer with this analysis? And then we try to even provide like external links or what you should do with the analysis to try to help you very quickly get to that driving action point. So we say, hey, this can be a great reason to reach out. If you're unsure what metrics they're likely tracking, visit the two links below before calling. Uh, Tooltips will open salesforce.com uh, or an email to their CEO. And then those two links are from a very prestigious venture capital firm, Andreessen Horowitz, about the 16 metrics that they look at when they're considering investing in a company. Uh, so all that you do is you grab web page as an object, drag it out into the dashboard, and you get this edit URL pane. This caret lets you choose sheet name. So you could either hard co code the URL if you wanted to just have a website open, uh, or you can use sheet name. And then up here in these dashboard actions, so go to the dashboard dropdown, these are all of the ways that we can dynamically load web pages. Uh, so if we were to uh, look at Salesforce, for instance, we've manipulated the search bar. So we just did like an empty search, and then we put the company's website at the end. So there's nothing in this that has like an ID or anything that would directly connect it to Salesforce. 
but because we do that empty search with the URL, we basically allow the users to click and it will search for their URL in Salesforce to see whether or not they're a customer. So we don't have to do some complex data jo join or blend that's gonna you know, maybe be difficult for somebody to try to replicate. It's just manipulating the search field. Um, same goes for something uh, like you know, looking up the industry in the Harvard Business Review. So Google search plus the sub-industry plus HBR. So what this empowers is us to go look at like, you know, Allbirds, super cool shoe company. Uh, we can Google the funding information. So you can see it just loads Allbirds funding, has information here for us. Uh, if, if we have the uh, CEO's email address, uh, we can actually open up an email that has a customized subject that you can kind of choose what it is. Uh, so when you think about a salesperson maybe needs to go to like four, five, six different applications to call someone, we're now trying to consolidate this down to really just Tableau. Like you're either going to Salesforce, you're going to Google, maybe you're going to uh, open up an email. Um, we can even like, you know, uh, look up the account in Siftery. So Siftery is a really cool website that looks at the technologies companies use. It's like user aggregated. Uh, and so if you can select that, it usually takes a little bit of time to load for whatever reason. Uh, and it will search for that company within Siftery to see like, if I'm a salesperson, I wanna know like, hey, what database do they use? Right? And so, I don't know why this isn't loading all the way, but um, so that's, those are some of the ways that we try to make that kind of as dynamic as possible. Um, if I'm wanting to uh, adjust that, um, I would just use the, the uh, okay, yeah, it's wanting me to log in, no thanks. Um, so if we were to go back to maybe Google the funding information and rather than the company, maybe we wanted to look at just the investors instead. Uh, we wanted to maybe go one level up we can just swap that out using that caret. So that was the drop down of everything that was on the details pane from that previous sheet. And so now it's gonna dynamically query the investors. So if we go back to that Allbirds example and we hover over the tooltip and we said Google funding information, it's looking up fidelity management rather than uh, Allbirds. Right? So it's just as simple as that. If it's in your data, you can dynamically query things and you don't necessarily need a connection to it. Um, if for whatever reason, like integrating it into the actual dashboard doesn't work for you, the URL actions are still an awesome way to go. Um, you can still bounce people out to a new tab, and this is super helpful information for them to leverage. It's more just about the workflow that you want to create. Uh, okay. Okay, so. Um, now to transition from like how do you do that one off within like an individual sheet, let's go through how to create that like cockpit feel, right? So those, those tiles, everything, the colors were like Salesforce, we get feedback all the time from people that are new to Tableau, they like can't tell which application they're in, they just often will like think it's Salesforce, which is kind of fun. Um, so how do we do that, how do we create that? So simply go grab the links from server once you've published up the content that you wanna use. Uh, save the PNG images of the dashboards in the shapes repository of Tableau. So you can use like a snipping tool or whatever to grab or uh, just an image. And then if you look at the destination in documents, you have a Tableau repository. Within that repository, you have a shapes folder. Within that, you can name the shapes and then, uh, or name the individual folder and then name whatever the images are. So what this allows you to do is if we jump back into Tableau desktop, you can take something like function, which is just like the name of the destination and put that onto shape. So you'll actually need to manipulate the marks card. There's a drop down, and you just choose shape. Uh, and then it will allow you to assign images or shapes to various data points. So uh, Tableau tries to be super helpful. If you name the images the same as the function, it will usually auto assign them to the right ones, which is super cool. If it gets it wrong, you can just manually change it. And then we drop URL onto the details pane. When we go to the dashboard, we just drop each sheet out using a layout container. And like my favorite feature on dashboards is distribute evenly. <laughs> uh, it's within a layout container. If you go to like the upper right of it, there's a little, another little carrot and just choose distribute evenly and it makes it look really nice. Um, and then drag the web object out like we just showed. So that's that big white space. And then this is the actual you know, URL action. So because we have the URL actually in the Excel sheet, we again don't need to hard code anything. So let's say we went back and we wanted to like add or maybe change that URL. We just can change it at the data source level and then it will automatically be reflected in Tableau. 
Um, and then once you're in the dashboard, so this is that next step, the, the call workflow that we started with, right? You just select whatever thumbnail it is uh, that has the dashboard that you want them to open on. Uh, and then format, I usually go 1650 by 2000. I wanna give like a lot of real estate for them to scroll and check out Salesforce and look at what's in there. Uh, we also use like two monitors at Tableau, so uh, that works really well for us. Um, you can obviously switch things out for like mobile or you know, make this work on other uh, platforms or layouts, but um, you know, that's usually what I go for. And then it just comes down to once it loads, so it does need to be loaded. If you just publish it without it loading, it just shows up blank for whatever reason. Uh, publish it and promote. So this promotion piece, I think, is uh, even more important <laughs> than the content you create. Um, so reach out to those who are using it. So those little ellipses, if you own the uh, workbook, you get that drop down, and you can actually click on who has seen this view. So you can go click into that. It will generate a list for you, and it just shows who's looking at this the most. Um, so we use that a ton at Tableau to go see who are some of the early adopters, what do they like about this, what do they not like, what would they change if they had their, their own, you know, if they could change it. Um, we also use comments as a way to drive engagement and use. So if you at a user in Tableau server, you can grab an image of that dashboard and then uh, it will send an email to them with your comment and if they click it, it will go to the filtered view that you generated for them. So this is a way, rather than meeting to like knock on doors or hit people up in Slack all the time, I'll just at somebody and then it generates this view and it takes them to it and we can kind of have a working conversation uh, down the right pane. Um, so let's, uh, let's take a deeper look at an example. The reason I like this example is because I did not build it. Uh, our marketing team did. And uh, there's all these cliches of like marketing and sales are like, you know, Hatfields and McCoys and like SpongeBob and Squidward um, are, you know, just warring peoples. Uh, and so uh, at Tableau, we're really not that way. It's been, it, it's been a really cool process of uh, collaboration. Um, and so in the past, we would have historically just had that KPI. Here's the amount of leads that we have for this campaign. Here's the percent that are contacted. And then marketing like begs us to call them. <laughs> and it's that classic thing, right, of like marketing's like, Sales doesn't call the leads, this is crazy, let's automate them. And sales is like, the leads are horrible, I'd call them if they were good, and marketing's like, how do you know they're bad, you haven't called them, and it's like, around and around you go. Uh, and so we started working with them to figure out how can we take a slightly different approach. Um, and so they added this additional detail of the campaign, so that shows by campaign what's making up that lower KPI. And then we have a list of everybody attached to the view so we can understand how to impact the KPI. So when we think about not wanting to say, I don't know, uh, we don't have to say, hey, I don't know what campaigns are the top performing ones. We have that here, the, most, the longest bar is who has the most uh, people attached to it. And we don't have to say, I don't know how to deploy my resources. Like, we can go get a list and go start attacking that campaign and actually calling people right away. And we can understand, are there like multiple people from an individual company that registered for it? Is there maybe some kind of project or initiative going on? And hopefully drive a more robust conversation. Uh, we can even go a level deeper. If we go select even a status within that campaign, like just people who have registered, it updates the KPI again. So before we had only contacted 29% of our leads. This one we've only contacted 17% of those who have registered for this campaign. And in the past, that would be like a hard conversation, right? Like marketing's like, guys, what is going on? Like this is a pretty good campaign. We spent a lot of money on this campaign. And instead, we're able to go through this workflow and we get a new curated list of the people associated with that status within that campaign that we can go engage. So if marketing has an ask for us, like, hey, we need to get a little bit more out of this campaign, we need some more engagement from it, it's not just like an ask lobbed over the fence without a bunch of context. Uh, we have an application that allows us to just be like insanely productive. Um, we're really trying to think about like how can we shave 30 seconds off of everything that we do. And over the course of a year, that's just gonna add up to this like huge bank of time that we get back. I mean, so it doesn't need to be some insanely impressive, impressive visualization or a cool use, like, it just is like, how, how can we save 30 seconds here? How can we put emailing the CEO in the tooltip so that they don't have to then, you know, go to Outlook and try to do it from there? Um, in the past, if, it's always important to contrast this with the past, uh, I would have opened up a Salesforce report uh, tried to figure out what the heck had they named the campaign, uh, where were the leads, 
I would have quickly given up, <laughs> uh, emailed one of my buddies or slacked one of my buddies and said, hey, do you got any, got any leads? You got any leads for that campaign? And, uh, or I would have wasted a lot of time, a lot of time. Uh, trying to build my own version of that or hunt down that list. And I had many situations where like, I got, like, I'm pretty good at building Salesforce reports. Like I've been in sales for a long time. I've used Salesforce for my whole career. I'm pretty good at it. Um, and I have gone through like an hour long quest to find leads like that. And then I have like three leads <laughs> associated with that campaign. And I'm like, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, and so the goal is to try to keep those moments from happening. Cause I believe everyone is smart and creative. I truly believe that. Um, I think the only reason people aren't super inquisitive in their job is because they rarely have been given an application that allows them to do it. Like if you yourself, or you were to talk to one of your salespeople or frontline folks and ask them like when you're watching a movie or when you're watching a sporting event, what are you doing? You're usually intaking information, pulling out your phone and trying to find more information. Like, oh, what university did that person go to? What other movies has that person been in? And I think the only reason we aren't that inquisitive in our jobs is because we rarely have an application that empowers us to do that. It just takes too much time. Or you think I have to know how to code and script to do it. And that's the cool thing with Tableau is that I think we can really empower people to, to leverage that curiosity, even as an end user like me, uh, to do some cool stuff. Um, okay, so uh, I wanted to try to keep this short because I wanted to give you guys time to try this yourself. Uh, to open your laptop up and grab a data source and you know, drop something onto the detail pane and leverage that URL action. We're not gonna do that right now, but if you're feeling like this went really fast, that's why. Uh, it's hard to sit through 45 minutes to an hour anyway, uh, but I wanted to give you guys lots of time to try this. But before I leave you with that, and we'll have time for questions too, so if there's things you saw or you wanna have some, if you have any questions, we're gonna give you the opportunity to do that. Uh, I wanted to give you a, a few different charges. So think application first. Don't think dashboard. Think application. How can I turn this into a productivity tool? How can I turn this into a problem solving application? Uh, not just a dashboard for a review of information. That review is super helpful and that review should be in there. Like how many leads have we contacted in the campaign? Uh, but think application. How can I encourage someone to go do something once they find out that information? Talk to us, consistently talk to the business. Like I, if you looked at the people that went up there today and talked at Pfizer and Charles Schwab, like especially the Charles Schwab presentation, like they went and just asked people those same questions I shared with you guys. What, are, what do you need daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly? Uh, before Tableau, if you'd asked me if I was a data person, I would have said no, no way. If I, if I, I would think of, like when I heard the word data, I just thought of like a huge spreadsheet, right? But if you would have asked me like, hey, do you have any ideas of how we could improve our sales process? I would have had like, 20 ideas for you. Um, and so don't necessarily even just look for the people that are like the data people. I would say look for those who you feel like are innovative and have good ideas and seem to care. And they'll likely be able to give you some really good feedback of how to help with that application piece. Avoid I don't know. So when we think application, when we think empowerment, how can you help people avoid that scenario where they have to say I don't know. I don't know why that campaign went well. I don't know why it didn't. I don't know who we should call. Um, Help them avoid that situation. Help your leaders avoid having to say, I don't know where to deploy my resources. I don't know where we should allocate more budget for a new campaign, or I don't know where we should allocate budget for a new territory. Um, and lastly, incorporate other applications. So you've seen a lot of Salesforce. Um, we think about like technology adoption for a CTO or anybody, any IT leader. Um, it's often hard for people just to find where to go. So the image up here is our internal learning platform. It's called Sales Insight. It's from a product called Sabo. And that's in Tableau Server. So one of those thumbnails actually just takes you to our internal learning platform. So if you're looking at your pipeline and you think, okay, I wanna go talk to people about Tableau Prep. We've had a huge announcement about it in our keynote, but I'm not feeling super confident about going and having that conversation. When we think about trying to save 30 seconds off of everything that we do, uh, a lot of times, like honestly, even at Tableau, like if that wasn't on that kind of uh, marquee hero image, it would be kind of hard to go find the Tableau prep uh, section in Sabo. And so what we try to do is really match kind of what's going on with uh, providing other links to help people learn and be super productive. So it doesn't just have to be a Tableau dashboard inside of Tableau, like you can pull other platforms, other applications in there uh, in order to, to allow people to take action right away. 
And it's as simple as just adding in like that URL. And as long as your you know, IT or your Tableau administrator is cool with that, you know, it should work just fine. Um, okay, my contact info, I'm the only Zane at Tableau. Pretty easy to find on LinkedIn. Uh, my email is zmurfit at tableau.com. If you guys have ideas or questions coming out of this, um, I love workshopping ideas and sharing feedback. Bandwidth wise, I probably won't have a ton of time to like get on the phone and talk to you about it. For that, I'd probably push you more toward your account management team. Uh, but I'm super passionate about this topic. Uh, when I saw the extensions API last year at TC, that's what really motivated a lot of this. Um, this isn't the extensions API, to be clear. There was like this great narrative at Tableau that I had gone and learned how to code. <laughs> and I was like banging out stuff in the extensions API to do this, and I was like, no, this is not the extensions API. Um, but I was just so uh, moved by that and excited that I thought, what can we do with the functionality that we already have in the platform? And so if you, if you have ideas or you wanna bounce something off of somebody, if you're struggling to get engagement from your business users and you wanna hear how we're helping other people do that, just shoot me a note. I'll, um, you know, I, I'm definitely down to, to help as much as I can. Uh, just bandwidth wise, it probably won't be a ton of phone calls, it'll just be text communication, but like, I, wa I want to help. Um, also, uh, on my personal Tableau public page, um, I have examples of this. So there's one from a partner who's here called Alight Analytics. They have a great Tableau public page about um, marketing. And I took a lot of their dashboards and put that into that kind of cockpit feel. I also have one looking at like NFL data. So if you have people that don't, you know, you're struggling to get engagement, you need to kind of show them that they're, and they're just sports geek or something, you can do that. Um, so those are two examples. There's also like learn Tableau in a day, uh, how is Tableau different, learn Tableau server in a day. Those are all links we've aggregated to help people ramp in Tableau. Uh, we have over 60 hours of training on our website. It can be hard sometimes to know where to go. So we've tried to aggregate those uh, to help you know where to go and where to learn. You can download those too. Like we often encourage people to put like a training folder inside of Tableau server and you can download those, brand them to your colors and then republish them and subscribe new users so that they have an easy way to go grab the free training that we provide on our website to help them ramp. Um, hopefully that means less people are like constantly coming to you asking for help. Uh, and lastly, um, I have another Tableau public profile called Fear the Wheat. Uh, the school I went to is out in a bunch of wheat fields and our big rival always tries to make fun of us about that and we think it's awesome, so we say fear the wheat. Uh, I share this with you because a lot of the concepts you see here, um, I figured out from testing my skills on a data set I care about. So I love college football, I probably care about it way too much. Um, my team, I actually started doing this when uh, WSU, Washington State University, where I went to, we were awful, we were like one of the worst teams in like the history of college football. And I'm like, I was like, man, I wonder how badly we're gonna lose this weekend. And so I like, found a data set and I was like, let's find out. <laughs> Uh, and so I would start making stuff in Tableau. Now we're actually okay, so it's really fun to do this stuff. Um, but I share this with you just to say like, find a data set you care about. Uh, if that's your own internal data, if that's our sample data, uh, Google just made a huge announcement of like they're aggregating tons of different data sets. If you go to places like Reddit, which you know there's lots of stuff on Reddit you probably shouldn't look at. Uh, there's lots of really great data sets though that are awesome for you to leverage. And so I would just encourage you like, learn, push yourself, collaborate, publish it on Tableau Public if it's like not proprietary data and get feedback, because um, that's a great way to just to learn um, and, and collaborate and test your skills. And like I said, a lot of what I showed you today was stuff that I figured out from trying to find a cool way to visualize college football data, and then I figured out how can I apply that in more of a business context. Um, if you like this session, I'm doing it again on Thursday morning. Uh, so I so appreciate how packed this room is, I really do, um, and would love it if, uh, if y'all could uh, send more people here. Um, please complete the survey. We care a lot about your guys' feedback and thoughts on this. We wanna make this as uh, impactful as possible going forward. So if you liked it, if you loved it, if you want more of it, give me a good review. Um, and with that, I just wanna say thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Uh, I'll stay up here for questions if people have any. Otherwise, go try it. Have a great conference.